The meat, I don't know what's in this meat, but it is like flavorful. extremely flavorful. You're a maker, not a baker. Yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10, we recommend. Oh man, yeah. Gnocchi, you get a little mad at it. Gnocchi. I just wanna keep shoveling this in my face, so I'm just gonna jump in here really quick and tell y'all you need to make this. It's that time again. We're gonna share with you three really easy recipes that you can make for dinner for your family that I'm sure they're gonna love. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. It is hot, really hot and humid in the south. So that's a combination for, ugh. It's also a combination for, I don't wanna heat up my kitchen. So tonight we are having a very simple dinner. You could make this for lunch for throughout the week, however you wanna do it. But this just sounded so delicious and something light on this really hot day. Comment below, are you like this? When it's really hot outside, I don't wanna eat a heavy meal. It just makes me feel even worse. So I like lighter meals especially during the summer. Tonight I am making a really quick chicken salad. This is tzatziki. I hope I'm saying that right. Y'all will correct me <laughs> if I'm saying it wrong. Chicken salad. You think you need something? Oh, Tim, mom's got chicken up there. I smell it. I'll give you some. Give me a minute. Okay, I'm gonna grab a plate out of the cabinet that you're in. Did y'all know you're in a cabinet? You're not on a tripod. Well, you're on a little handheld tripod inside the cabinet. See, look. Okay. Anywho, I'm grabbing this. We're going to shred this small rotisserie chicken. I just use a small little paring knife to help get the skin off. Normally I get my rotisserie chickens from Sam's, but I couldn't make it over there to get a new one. And I say new one because a lot of times I will grab two or three in one trip and just shred them and put them in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer. That way I always have rotisserie chicken on hand, but we're out. Okay, I promised a little girl I would give her a piece of chicken. There. You wanna take it? Okay. Now I need to grate a cucumber. It said a medium cucumber. This is just what I have. This is came out of our garden. It is a pickling cucumber. You guys told me that over on Instagram. If you aren't following me there, if you have Instagram, go follow me there. But I was asking about that because I was confused as to why they were short and fat. They taste fine. We've eaten several of them. They're great. But we need to grate one of these. So I'm gonna use my cheese shredder. Fun fact. You can do more than shred cheese to grate this up, but I'm gonna peel it first. Okay, I cut off all around so that we don't have the seeds in the mix because it's very seedy. <laughs> Luda, you have to move, baby. Sorry, there's a cat under my feet. So we're gonna grate what is left here. I've made hash browns this way by grating potatoes. There's so many cool things that you can use this for. Ta-da! So the recipe says half of a red onion. Y'all, this red onion is larger than Gracie's head. You want a comparison, Gracie? Let's look. It's bigger than her head, for sure. You don't want that, do you? Okay, I'm just gonna go with about that much right there. I've got some fresh dill here. If you want to use dried dill, you can. Um, you'll just use about two thirds of a teaspoon, but we're gonna use about two tablespoons or all of this dill basically. So I'm just gonna go through and get these leaves off or the, yeah, the leaves off of the stem. And then lastly, I'm just gonna cut this lemon in half because we need one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. So we'll use that in just a bit. Now it's time just to assemble everything. Wait, one more thing. I need to squeeze any excess moisture out of the uh, cucumber. So it says to use a tea towel. I'm just gonna use a paper towel. I've done this before. I don't know if you can tell, there's a lot of moisture on here. Let's do that one more time. Okay, I think that's good. I've got this somewhat large bowl. I think it's an eight cup. Yeah, we're gonna add our grated cucumber. Now the recipe calls for three fourths a cup of plain Greek yogurt. I'm gonna start with a half a cup because I feel like my rotisserie chicken was so small. I don't want it to be too liquidy. I can always add more, but I can't take away, so. Do you ever have a fear that you're accidentally using vanilla even though it, it flat out says it's plain? I've looked at it a good three or four times. Plain, yes. But every time I use Greek yogurt, I'm scared to death it's vanilla and it's gonna taste awful. <laughs> Let's add in our couple of tablespoons of fresh dill, our one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, gonna be about half of this lemon. We need one clove of garlic minced and some salt and pepper. I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt and maybe a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And let's just stir all of this first. 
Now we're gonna add in our rotisserie chicken and our diced red onion. Now stir everything to coat it. If I feel like I need a little more Greek yogurt, I can always add that in, not a big deal. I think I can add just a little bit more in. So let's do that. I'm just gonna do one big spoonful. Boop. I know y'all are just here for the sound effects, right? That's the perfect consistency that I want. Bon appetit. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm gonna add, squeeze a little more lemon juice in there and I'm gonna go in with a little more salt. Perfection. It is time for the commentator. The commentator. I've got on mine. It says Southern Lady Spud. <laughs> Both of our shirts. You have a couple more shirts. I got a couple more, yeah. They come from you guys. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> it seems like every time I go to my P.O. box, there's a new shirt for the commentator. <laughs> if you are new here, he is called the commentator because he goes through well, I go through and choose comments from the last video and he reads them on camera and then we respond. It's just fun. So if you were thinking about possibly leaving a comment, do it because we might read it. You never know. Yeah, we like feedback and interaction. So That's it's fun. Right. Sandy, you can take block Parmesan cheese, thinly slice it and dip it in balsamic vinegar. And it's awesome. That sounds good. So in my last video, mm. I was talking about how I love to snack on Parmesan cheese. Wow. I'll just snack on it randomly. I love that. I love balsamic vinegar. Yeah. So I can just imagine how good that tastes. Mm. My mouth's watering right now. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to have to try that. Next time I get a block of cheese, Parmesan cheese, I'm going to do that. So yeah. thank you for that tip. Okay, it's time to plate it up. I've got these pita breads. Fold that up. Looks like a little taco. Some fresh maters from our garden. And then we're gonna grab some chips too. What's your favorite flavor of chips? Mine, salt and vinegar. It won't stay closed. There we go. Nope, it's gonna open again. Oh, we're adding chips to the pita pocket. Light, easy dinner. Boop, let's eat. I was telling them that my favorite flavor of chips, salt and vinegar. I would say that's um very high on my list. Okay, I'm I'm going to name the ones that I think that could be your number one. Okay. Doritos, original. Yes. Jalapeno. Yeah. And salt and vinegar. Yeah. I think my all-time favorite is probably Doritos. I've known yeah. you but for I a year But I love salt and vinegar, too. I love jalapeno. Yeah. I've known you for a year, too. I know it's, these things. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. This looks good. He has no idea what this is, y'all. Tell me what flavors you're getting. Dill. Very good. Some onion. Mm -hmm. It's got chicken, but it's got some kind of, I don't know if that's like mayonnaise or something. It's Greek yogurt. Oh, okay. It yeah, also really... has grated cucumber in there. Mmm. I love the pita bread with it too. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, it's like, it's like a Greek. I'm getting the Greek vibe for sure. A little bit of Greek, yep. Very it's tzatziki, much. like the tzatziki yeah. sauce. Okay. That's what it's called. Yeah. Tzatziki chicken salad. That's really good. Okay. Light, very refreshing. Good. Yeah, I love it. It's very tasty. Okay. Well, good. It's actually something really good for this hot summer day. So. That's, that's the whole point I did yeah. it. And we've got more for lunch tomorrow, so. It's very refreshing. Okay. I good. love it. Good, good flavors. Y'all have to give this one a try. I mm -hmm. love some chicken salad, and this mm -hmm. is just a different way to make it. Because feta makes everything better, I'm going to put some feta on here. We were saying maybe some sliced Kalamata olives would add even to the to that Greek kind of flavor. I forgot I had that in the fridge. I just opened it up. So, I'll be back. The feta is a nice contrast. I like that a lot. Let's see if she likes feta. I don't know if she does or not. That'd be a yes. Well, my feta, are you a Greek kitty? You got some on your nose, little girl. It's okay. Save it for later. Dinner tonight is gonna be all in one pan. It's gonna take less than 30 minutes and it sounds so delicious. It is a twist on a stir fry. This is a Mediterranean ground beef stir fry. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is chop up this red bell pepper. And then we also have a pint of cherry tomatoes and I'm just going to quickly go through and half those. Got my large skillet here. I have heated, heated it to about medium high heat. I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. And then to this, we're just gonna add in our red bell pepper and our cherry tomatoes. We're gonna let this saute for a good four to five minutes. So while this is sauteing, I'm gonna go over and chop up some green onion. We've got two green onions here. I'm gonna chop all of it all the way down to the white. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we're gonna separate the green and the white part. It has been about three, four minutes. 
We are gonna add in four cloves of minced garlic, which is music to our ears because we love garlic, y'all know this. And we're gonna let it saute for another minute or so. We don't wanna burn the garlic, but we wanna infuse that flavor in there. Let's go in with our spinach. I have, I have a five ounce container. I think the recipe calls for an eight ounce container. I removed most of the stems. I'll still catch some here and there, I'm sure. You don't have to remove stems. I've gotten this question in the past. No, you don't have to, it's personal preference. Stem. 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 <gasps> Ooh, big stem. I'm also going to add the white part of my green onion. Let's just stir this around and let it wilt down. And then after this wilts down, we're going to remove all of these veggies to a plate. And then we will move on to our next step. Our spinach is completely wilted. So let's take this whole pan and just scoop it onto this plate over here. My wrist is awful, y'all. I have no strength in my wrist. This is so heavy and it's not even that much stuff. Now to our pan, we're gonna add in a pound of ground beef. While this is cooking, we're gonna add in some kosher salt. This is to taste, so just add as much as you'd like. We're also gonna add in some pepper, but I've got to have two hands for that. And then about a half a teaspoon of dried oregano. I got most of the grease off. You do wanna go ahead and drain it before you add your veggies back in. I'm gonna turn it down to, actually I'm just gonna turn it off because it's plenty hot. We're just gonna add in the rest of our green onion and then something I forgot and just grabbed out of the fridge, feta cheese. I mean, come on now, you cannot forget that. So let's add in feta. Honestly, I don't even know the me measurements. I feel like you measure cheese with your heart. You know, it's kinda like garlic. Whatever it says, I usually add more, so there's that. Well, let's just let this warm through and y'all dinner is ready for our next comment all right lori said mandy when cooler weather hits and you have the urge to do some baking you could do special episodes called mandy and the baking i love it <laughs> that's good so if you've been around a while you've seen when i've done baking i say baking like this because i don't really bake that's not my it's not my forte you're a maker not a baker yeah <laughs> <laughs> so whatever baking i do do you gotta be careful the way you say that um we called it batter chatter we so do, do some batter chatter you should go i think i have a playlist with my previous batter chatters there's four or five of them Maybe I'll bring those back this fall. Let me know in the comments below. Is that something you want to see again? Do you want to see some more batter chatter? We can call it Mandy and the Baking. I don't care what we call it, but if you want to see that and maybe see me attempt to do a little bit tougher of recipes for me, it could be quite comical. <laughs> so thank you. I love that. This is a super healthy dinner. I also did this 90 second brown basmati Ross. Ross, not Ross from Friends. It's not what we're having for dinner. We're having brown basmati rice. Oh, that's hot. Very hot. I'm gonna season that. Something I found in my pantry the other day, 21 seasoning salute from Trader Joe's. Totally forgot I had purchased this. You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit over here too, just cause I feel like it. The smallest amount of salt. Quick, healthy dinner, let's eat. So if you're wondering what that is, that's one of the leftover pita breads. By yeah. the way, we ate that chicken salad on the second day and I liked it even better on the second day. It was delicious. Yeah, this looks am amazing, the smells. I know. Yeah, that is really good. Tomatoes and spinach, is that spinach? Yep. Really good flavors, very rich. Mm -hmm. The meat, I don't know what's in this meat, but it is like flavorful. extremely flavorful. Well, good, I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. So this is a winner. Yeah. This is really good. 10 out of 10, we recommend. Oh man, yeah. It just gets better with every bite. I it really like. does. The <laughs> tomatoes, yeah. I mean, all of it's really good, but the tomatoes is like the star of the show. It is. They so good. enhance the flavors, mm -hmm. the acidity of the tomatoes, and the flavors mixed in are just, it's just incredible. It's delicious. So <clears throat> highly recommend y'all, you gotta make this one. It'll take you 20, 25 minutes. Seriously, so fast. So I thought we'd do something a little different this week. Since the first two recipes that I've shared with you were Greek or Mediterranean, we thought, why not go three for three? So instead of using a subby supper, because I looked through some and I could not find a Greek or Mediterranean dish from the ones that I looked through, I just found another recipe that would fit the bill and we're gonna make that 
this week. This may remind you of one that I made not too long ago. I did some turkey pesto meatballs with a Parmesan garlic orzo. This is a Greek twist on that. We're gonna have Greek chicken meatballs with a lemon orzo. If you recall, I'm not a huge fan of mixing meat with my hands. And I know some people have told me to use my KitchenAid mixer, but Annette, if you are watching, thank you. So I went and checked my P.O. box. Actually, Steven went and checked my P.O. box. And in there from Amazon were these vinyl disposable powder-free gloves. That was very kind of you. So we're gonna use those today and get started on mixing up the chicken meatballs. Okay, so we've got one pound of ground chicken. We've got one large egg. We need half a cup of feta cheese that's crumbled. I don't know that I have quite half a cup, but we're just gonna use whatever is left in here. Some of these larger pieces, I'm gonna break these up a little bit. And then we've got some seasonings. I've got a teaspoon and a half of dried oregano and then a teaspoon each of basil, onion powder, garlic powder, dill, and parsley. These will not lack in flavor, my friends. And then we also have a half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. Been working on this for five minutes. <laughs> so I had to wash my hands and my hands were still a little damp. Not a good combination when you're trying to put this on. Hopefully this other hand is good and dry. I think it is. You got this, baby. Okay, there we go, there we go. All right, we ready? Yes. I really hope this helps. <gasps> okay, it's still, I mean, it's a texture thing. I can still, it's not the best, but at least it's not right up on my skin. It's definitely better with these gloves on, I will say that. So thank you, Annette. I need to form 15 little meatballs, and I guess I need to do that while I still have this. Will you get me a plate? I will. Thank you. All right, I'm not sure exactly how large these should be. It said we should get 15 from this one pound of ground chicken. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Boom, we did it. Look, mess free. It's a good day. Let's turn our pan to about medium, just a little bit over medium heat. I've got a large skillet here that we're gonna let heat up. I also have this pot over here. We're gonna boil this water because we are just going to cook our orzo according to package directions before we add the lemon and other ingredients to it. So that's really simple. That'll be going over here while we start on our chicken meatballs. Okay, we are waiting on everything to heat up over there. So we need some lemon zest for the orzo once it's done. Once it's done, And Steven said he would zest the lemon for us. Zest? <laughs> you're not fully clean unless you're zestfully clean. Oh my. As long as I get a snort out of my wife, Wait, it's all good. Wait, I don't know. Can we, is that copyrighted? Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> I doubt it. I'm sure they would, uh, they would be glad that we uh, <laughs> shouted them out. <laughs> all right. Look at that. That looks good. Okay, I think our pan is ready. So let's add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And oh, I don't have my gloves on. But that's okay. Let's just start putting these down in there. Oh, we don't have a sizzle yet. Let's wait just a second. Oh, there we go. It's starting to sizzle, baby. You see it? A little sizzle. A little sizzle action. Okay. Y'all just missed it. <laughs> you know what Steven said? He said, what's that song? It doesn't sizzle, sizzle. It boils. And I said, you mean it doesn't jiggle, jiggle. It boils. He was like, oh yeah. Sizzle, sizzle. It boils. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to cook this for about five minutes on one side, then we'll flip them all and cook them about five minutes on the other side, and then we're gonna end up putting the lid on it and letting them cook all the way through. We'll test them with a meat thermometer and make sure they get up to 165 degrees. You don't want to overcook them though because then they'll dry out. We've got one cup of orzo that we're just gonna boil for about seven or eight minutes. Okay, so these middle ones are definitely ready to be flipped. So I'm just gonna gently turn these over. You gotta be gentle, because they could fall apart. Ooh, they're pretty. Parmesan cheese for the princess. Kimberly said, I think sun-dried tomatoes would be an amazing addition to the gnocchi dish. I have a confession. If I see a recipe that has sun-dried tomatoes, I skip it. It's the texture of sun-dried really? tomato. Mm. I don't know that I really have a texture issue with that. Oh, I do. I've tried to like them because the flavor of it is great. Yeah. It's, it's the texture that gets me. Yeah. I'm Am I the only one? I'm sure that maybe, they would be a great addition. Maybe we could just try it again sometime. Gnocchi sounds like gnocchi. Got to get that Y sound in there. So I always say gnocchi. Gnocchi. I know I can't say it. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. Do not say it 
say it like that. Gnocchi. You get a little mad at it. Gnocchi. <laughs> I got it. You got Gnocchi. it. Oh, I got I it too. I just lost it. Gnocchi. Stop it. <laughs> Gnocchi. <laughs> I always just say Noki. Uh. So it's interesting. I didn't know that that's how you're supposed to say it. So thank you for educating me. <laughs> I more than likely won't say it like that because I struggle. <laughs> just <laughs> like I don't say bull the right way. And that was Brienne Hill. I think I forgot the name. Thank you, Brienne. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate that, but <clears throat> Noki. Noki. Okay, it's been another five minutes. We have flipped them, kind of moved them around again. And so Steven's gonna put the lid on it. We're gonna let those hang out until they're done cooking. It is now time to drain our orzo. So that's what we're gonna do. So we've got our orzo drained. We're gonna add in about a tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice, which is probably about half of this large lemon. We also need, you can use a couple of tablespoons of butter if you want to, or olive oil. So I'm just, I already had the olive oil out, so. I'm just gonna throw olive oil in. We need about two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. You can use shredded or grated. I was gonna grab more Parmesan. What you doing, boy? Okay, I had a little more grated Parmesan to add in. Now we need to add in our seasonings. Got about a quarter teaspoon of dill, and then we have a half teaspoon each of salt, pepper, oregano, and garlic powder. Now, we just need to mix that up. And since our meatballs aren't quite done yet, I'm just gonna put a lid on this to keep it warm and this will be good. I'm gonna take a, a bite though, cause I want one. Steven said, what are we gonna do with the zest? I said, oh, I guess we are gonna add that in there, cause I forgot. <laughs> and now I'm gonna take a little taste test. Oh man. Thank you. Uh -huh. Let's check on the chicken and let's just go in and check our temperature. Oh yeah, they done. Man, that is really, really, really good. Love the lemon flavors, garlic. You can definitely get all of the seasonings. It's not bland. It doesn't need a sauce. No, mm -mm. he kept asking, there's no sauce, that's weird. It doesn't need it? Mm -mm. It's not dry out. Oh, good. No. Cole, do you like it? Very much. Very much. He is, mm. um, he just got back from cutting his grandmother's grass. Oh, oh, there it is. Yep. So he is, <laughs> he's all sweaty over there, but I'm so glad y'all mm. are liking it. I am gonna dig in. And this was just one of those microwavable broccoli and cheese sauce things. So I just want to keep shoveling this in my face. So I'm just going to jump in here really quick and tell y'all you need to make this. Super easy and quick. So much flavor. Really good. Highly recommend. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Y'all should make it. I'm going to finish eating. Love ya. Bye.